Jacob Burn here from StellaCloner.com, and in this video, I'm going to be discussing the ins and outs of a question I get all the time, and that refers to high altitude cooking and baking. Now, as I'm sure a lot of you are aware, cooking at altitude or various altitudes will change your interaction of food and heat and how food comes out. So people have issues with baking cakes at altitude, baking breads at altitude, cooking various items, especially water-based items at altitude. And there's hundreds, if not thousands of books published with high altitude baking recipes or high altitude cooking recipes. But I promise you, once you understand the fundamentals of high altitude cooking that we're going to cover in this video, you'll never need one of those books again. Sorry, book publishers. But because it's really not rooted in the recipe, it's rooted in the fundamental science of cooking. And cooking is really just the controlling of water. When you think about it, when you stop and think about what cooking is, a lot of what you're doing as a cook in the kitchen is you're controlling water in its various states, whether it's water in a piece of meat, whether it's water in fruits and vegetables, whether it's water in the pot that you're boiling. And because of this, because everything that we cook for the most part is water-based or has a certain amount of liquid involved, then altitude will affect that because altitude affects water. And here's why. So we're gonna start our discussion by drawing this nifty little diagram for you here. So this is our baseline at zero foot elevation. This is sea level. So for all my friends outside of the United States, don't worry, I'm gonna have all the conversions in this video show notes found on stellaculinary.com. But I'm more comfortable with uh, feet and Fahrenheit since I was raised in the US. So right now, let's look at sea level. So at zero foot elevation, we are at sea level, and the boiling point at sea level is 212 degrees Fahrenheit and 100 degrees Celsius. Now, as we climb in elevation, our boiling point, or the temperature at which water will boil, falls. Now, why is that? Well, first, we need to look at the concept of atmospheric pressure. And atmospheric pressure is literally, when I'm standing here right now, I have air above me, right? It's as simple as that. And that air has a weight. It doesn't weigh nothing, it actually weighs something. So the air that's pressing down on a given point is called atmospheric pressure. So at sea level, as you can see, we obviously have more air above us at sea level than we would at higher elevation. So as we climb in elevation, we are going to have less air on top of us or less atmospheric pressure. Now, why is this important? Well, to put this into perspective, let's look at a boiling pot of water. So here I have my pot of water and underneath that I have my nice high flame because you wanna obviously boil water over high. I'll even add in some orange here for you to make it a little more uh, lifelike. See how lifelike that pot of boiling water is? And in this pot of boiling water, I have water. And we're gonna represent our water by drawing little circles because I want you to understand that although it looks like a liquid to us, water is obviously made up of individual water molecules. And this is important because our temperature, our boiling point or any given temperature is made up or is basically a measurement of molecular movement. So even when water is in its solid state, meaning it's below 32 degrees Fahrenheit, zero degrees Celsius, so it's frozen and it's in the shape of an ice cube where it's in a solid ice state, the water molecules are still moving around. They're just moving much, much slower and that's why that water is a solid. Now, as we change that water's phase from a solid to a liquid by applying heat, the molecules are moving around faster. And as we apply more and more heat, we apply our high flame or our high temperature to that pot, those water molecules start moving very, very rapidly. And as the molecular movement increases, the temperature of the water increases. Well, this is just, again, a measurement of energy. And you have a force known as atmospheric pressure pressing down on you at any given point that you're on at the Earth. And it just so happens that it takes 212 degrees Fahrenheit, 100 degrees Celsius of molecular movement or of heat energy to overcome this force of atmospheric pressure, again, at sea level and change the water's phase 
into gas, which we know as steam. So this steam is escaping into the atmosphere and it, it requires energy for this to happen. So because boiling happens uh, based upon, or the boiling point occurs based upon the atmospheric pressure, it just goes to show you that as we climb up in elevation, the boiling point drops. In fact, for about every thousand degrees that you climb in elevation, or excuse me, every thousand feet that you climb in elevation, the boiling point will decrease by about two degrees Fahrenheit and one degree Celsius. Now, this isn't exact. This is just a rough estimation. There are some decimal points involved, but that's kind of your safe rule of thumb. So if you're at the 3,000 foot elevation mark, we'll mark this at 3,000 feet right here, your boiling point is going to drop and it's actually going to be, instead of 212 degrees Fahrenheit, it's actually going to be closer to 206 degrees Fahrenheit or 97 degrees Celsius. You see how quick I did that math there? So as you climb up, your boiling point decreases when, and so when you're cooking things at altitude, and we're not talking about baking and pastry, yet. we're gonna get into that in our next little board here, but when you're cooking things at altitude, they're just gonna take longer, especially if water is heavily involved. So boiling pasta at altitude, well, you have a decreased boiling temperature, so your pasta is gonna take longer. Braising meats at altitude, even though you're supposed to be going low and slow, that water or that liquid that you're braising your meats in is constantly approaching the simmer point, which is very close to the boiling point. And it just so happens that it takes longer to braise at altitude. Basically for every 3,000 feet you climb in altitude, it's gonna take you a half hour to an extra hour to braise something to that nice, soft, tender state. But where this really gets tricky is baking at altitude.